Joining us now is wide receiver Slade Bowden. Slade, good morning. If you would, provide us an opening statement about the excitement of being in the college football playoff before you open the floor for questions. Uh, good morning, y'all. Uh, thank y'all for having me. Um, I know we're excited. I hope y'all are excited uh, for Friday. It's going to be a good game, uh, good times, and uh, I, I'm excited. I know we all are, too. Our first question comes from Michael Casagrande. Hey, Slade. Uh, just with Bryce Young, we see him, you know, we, we get him on Zoom. We talk to him a little bit, but we don't really get to know, I guess, the full Bryce Young. Is there, is there a story, is there a moment that stands out to you that, that, that people wouldn't see of him that would explain who he is? Um, I, a good story, I would say, is just um, when I wa I've watched film with him uh, before and just when watching film and just seeing how he sees – you know, different teams' coverages and, you know, how he looks at a film the way he does. It's just you realize how smart of a player and how instinctive he really is. And it kind of gives you a, a backside of like, okay, well, this makes sense on why, why he does so well during the game because he, he studies the game so well and uh, he, he just sees different things that not many people can see uh, watching film on another team. Our next question comes from Johnny Cognon. Hey, Slade. A uh, quick question for you. Going back to the Texas A&M loss, obviously Alabama doesn't lose a heck of a lot of football games, but can you walk me through what practice was like following that week? And do you feel like that was really a turning point for this team because you guys have seen locked in and dialed in since the moment you lost? Right. I mean, uh, I feel like practice didn't change much when it came to how we did things. I think definitely our mindset was a little different. Maybe that's kind of what you're asking. Um, you know, we all said, like, we didn't want to forget how it felt to lose that game. And so we, we knew that we had to go out every day, you know, so forth, you know, practices, practices, whatever, every game, and uh, not forget what happened, get, not forget that feeling and, um, you know, continue to come out and practice every day like it was our last game because you never know when you it's going to be your last you know because we weren't expecting to lose that game but it happened so uh, I'm thankful that we got back on the right track and uh, got back on the right mindset after that game our next question comes from Carl Prather hey Slay good morning I wanted to ask about the wide receiver room and the the progression of many young guys uh, within that room from fall camp through the regular season and obviously uh, moving to, to now and what you've seen from a number of those guys being highly productive this year. Right. I, th I feel like a lot of those guys have uh, done a good job. Um, you know, they've all improved throughout the season from the beginning. Uh, they've seen firsthand that all it takes is one guy to go down and the next guy needs to step up. You know, that's like an Auburn game with uh, Jameson – uh, going out in the, after the first half with the targeting and also uh, Mechie going down in the SEC. You know, it all, any, anything can happen, and everyone has to be ready. And so I feel like that's kind of um, got these guys going a little bit more because they, they now they know that anything if, if there was something to happen, the next guy can be up. So they got to be ready. But they've done a good job with that. Our next question comes from Mike Rodak. What's been the impression in the receiver room of Ahmad Gardner, the, the Cincinnati cornerback, and just as a group, how aware of you of him not allowing a touchdown since he's been at Cincinnati? Um, you know, we we more, you know, when we're looking at film and looking at uh, any team, whether it's Cincinnati or teams we've played in the past, uh, you know, looking at the coverages and how they play different receivers and the leverages and all that stuff. Uh, with Cincinnati, obviously both corners are very athletic. Um, They've done a good job all year, and we have to be on our best game and be uh, the most prepared we can when uh, going to face them, just like we have been all year, and that's what we do every game. Our next question comes from Jeff Spiegel. Blade, it used to be that, uh, you know, you would hesitate if you were a coach counting on a true freshman to come through and make a big play like Brooks did in the Iron Bowl. Uh, what is it about these guys who come in and, and they're just so ready for big moments like that now? Uh, it, I feel like it all comes with how we prepare. 
and we, you know, I feel like we're going against the best defense every day in practice. So that also uh, prepares us for moments like that. And uh, also, you got you know Coach Saban on the field every day at practice. So you know, if you could do well during that, and I'm pretty, you know, I feel like that's that's harder than actually going out there and playing in the game. So that's uh, that's that also could be a, a good reason. But uh, Jacor did a good job, stepped up in a big moment. Happy for him, and uh, we're but we're uh, continuing to improve from that. So, our next question comes from Carrie Osep. Good morning, Slade. So, obviously, um, all of you players that come to Alabama, you know what to expect, and you want to be here in postseason. But I'm just curious from the outside looking in, we can all only imagine, but what is it truly like to be in the dynasty that we're all getting to watch and is it something that you did expect when you came here well I was uh I was expecting and also hoping that's how it would be uh now this is my third time being in the semis and I'm I, you know I'm only thankful and blessed for that but it's uh it's it's a very uh very you know I'm very thankful for these games and being able to be in this position and uh you know we just continue to you know say that we're not done yet and you know, we still got this game, and uh, hopefully uh, everything works out the way we have planned all year. Our next question comes from Billy Witts. Good morning, Slade. Um, I'm just wondering, like, the, at the start of this year, I mean, this, this season has been different because uh, players have, uh, around the country have been able to, you know, had, have access to the vaccine. Um, that, that they didn't have last season, but these last few weeks, uh, you know, with the, the latest variant, uh, I'm wondering how, you know, did you sort of think that uh, you were past the worst of this or, or, or not even the worst of it, but just that, um, you know, the, that you had to, you know, worry about, you know, positive tests and outbreaks. And I think now we've seen like seven schools that have had to uh, not play in bowl games. Um, yeah, I mean, we never, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I never know when it's actually going to end. Uh, I hope it ends as soon as, as soon as possible. That would be great. Uh, but you never know when it's going to end. So I feel like we're, uh, just prepared for the worst and, uh, we have the best doctors and trainers and to me in the world. So I feel like, um, if, if I know they're, if I, I'm going to trust in them and I don't feel like they're going to steer, steer us wrong. So. Uh, I know that we're going to do our best to handle any kind of situation that comes to us, and I feel like we've done that done that to the best of our ability all year and last year. And I think we'll continue to do that as well. And so when, when's the uh, when's the last time you were tested? Uh, I, I honestly I I can't tell you because we usually don't get tested unless uh, we have symptoms. Our next question comes from Callum Squires. Hi, Slade. Good morning. Thank you for taking the time. Um, I just wanted to ask you about your, your offensive coordinator, Bill O'Brien, um, what your relationship with him has been like this season and kind of what kind of experience he's been able to pass on to you considering his, you know, impressive resume. Right. Uh, it's, been, it's been great uh, having uh, Coach O'Brien this year. Uh, I felt like it didn't take long for us to uh, – uh, connect as an offense with him, and uh, it's. I feel like it's only improved, you know, the chemistry throughout the season, and uh, we all trust when O'Brien's uh, play calling, and we know that he's going to put us in the best position. And you know, the best thing about Coach O'B is like he wants success for us, and he wants us to do well uh, more than him. So he's going to do. He's going to try to put us in the best situation he thinks, and and we all trust and believe that that's the best as well. Our final question comes from Tony Suklis. Hey, Sled, I know you don't really like talking about yourself, but do you kind of feel that you're a little bit underrated, and th does that kind of create a little bit of a chip on your shoulder when you're out there? Uh, yeah, I try not to think about it, but, you know, there's a lot of people, you know, when I was uh, getting recruited, said that I would never play at Alabama, that I never should have came to Alabama. And then I started playing, and then, oh, he'll never start. And then I started. So, yeah, there's always uh, something else. You know, he'll never do this or that, but it's okay because I enjoy it. Thanks. Slade, thank you very much. Best of luck on Friday. Thank you all. You have a good day.